Alright guys, so we're back. Full horror part 6, I believe. <laughs> I'm losing track now. As you stop to rest on your way, your companions approach you, led by Brunhild. She has something to say. Who listen to her. My lord, Sven's hideout was a dangerous place, but we managed to ransom Bodo. I understand you want to find your mother, but let me tell you, when I was in the court of the Jarl Kenemir, I heard horrible things about Sigir. Sigir, its snake in the eye, was in the mead hall of the Jarl of Kenemir on more than one occasion. He is not just any man, my lord. You know that the Jarl of Kenemir is a hard man, but he trembled before Sigir. Sigir doesn't say a lot. He never smiles, and his snake eyes burrow into you as if he was trying to read your thoughts. I was but a slave, but I heard things. People say that he is the most dangerous of the sons of Ragnar, a man who would kill you just for coughing nearby, or for being in his way on the wrong day. The beautiful Brunhild is right, Assassin Parks. From what I know, Sigir the Ragnarsson is a kind of man that anyone should stay away from. Fortunately, he is in our way. I don't believe it is so bad. You can't trust the Yar of Kenemir since he is an accomplished actor who uses every possible tool to try to manipulate others. If he saw an advantage in passing as timid before Seir, he would have done that. I would be very careful with him as he is a man who smiles when you face him and stabs you with a dagger when you turn. With Sigir, at least you always know where he is coming from. Ringard is talking without knowing him. I have heard things and seen things. Maybe Ringard was too busy drinking or betraying someone. Sigir is spiteful, never forgiving, and never forgetting. You have the gall, woman, to call me a drunk and a traitor to my face. You know nothing about me. Watch your words, or you will have to watch your back. Brunhild, Ringard has had a hard life. Don't use it to have... Um, Ringard, overcome your regrets. Am I with grown people or children? Silence, both of you. Now, Bodo, what do you think? Ooh, they don't really like me. We are at crossroads. Sigir, snake in the eye, has what we need. And your mother's life is in danger. In my opinion, we should go talk to him. Even if it costs us our lives, we have no choice. Maybe there is another way. There is a powerful man who hates Sigurd, King Horik Gothritsenem of Denmark. Sigurd's king. Why does his king hate him? Well, I only know what I've heard. They are enemies. Maybe Sigurd wants to be king himself. Sigurd would be stupid then. King Horik would banish him. Make him an outcast and strip him of his lands by denouncing him the assembly of the thing, the slightest infraction. My knowledge is limited, but perhaps Sigurd is as powerful as the king himself. Or maybe King Horik doesn't want more wars of Denmark after getting his throne after a long war of other Jarls. Ringard, what is this thing you speak of? The thing of the assembly is a meeting of free men where disputes are solved by political decisions are made. I think we should get the protection and support of the King Horak. This will give us an advantage when talking to Seer, and will force him to respect our lives. If King Horak helps us, you can legally claim your mother back. Do not go straight to Seer at Snake in the Eye now. It may cause the death of your mother, and perhaps you will lose track of Sin Bulnik forever. What is more, there, what is more, there is no guarantee that King Horak will support us. If I had to choose between going straight to Seard and getting myself killed, going to Horik and getting your mother killed, I wouldn't know what to say. You got me out of the hole where I was, so I'm fine with your choice, whatever it is. I need to think about it. Thank you all. We have to continue our travels. Okay. So I'm going to read up. And go from there. All right, so I'm gonna go to uh, Ribe and uh, see if I can find out where King Horik is.
While your party rests to recover from the fatigue on the road, you can take advantage to get away a bit from the camp and to have some privacy as you have an upset stomach. But your relaxation hidden among some rocks is disturbed by a noise to the right. Quickly dress and take up your weapon. Basically, I was taking a crap. Stranger shouts, quick, back to camp, you're in danger. Ooh, look at that hottie. One attacker, who are you, woman? Anyway, you're too late. Assassin Parks, the Yard of Kenemir wants your head. You are a fool to walk away from the camp. Okay. Well, let's show this dude who's daddy. death there bro what's up what's up where are the other guys Is that it? No, Horat Gotherson. I come from Fries. I need to talk to you about an important issue. So this guy is the King of Denmark. You may, you have my interest. I am listening to you. I need to talk about Sigurd. Sigurd Ragnarsson is one of my Jarls, and we have nothing to talk about. Do you understand? Are you finished, or do you want something else? It's... Hmm. Huh. Okay. It seems you will not have the help of the king. You will have to talk to Jarl Sigurd Dragoners, like in the eye directly. Alright. Your men have notified you that someone is coming towards you. It is a single figure who advances without hiding, with the full confidence. He is a tall man, robust and proud bearing. When he arrives before your men, he shows open hands, so all can see that he is not armed. He seeks you with his eyes and walks towards you. One of your men stops with him with the spear. Stops him with the spear. Hello, my name is Eagle. Keep your distance and tell me what is it you want. Speak, Eagle. A little time, sir. Listen to my story. I am important to you. I am a son of King Horik, but not a legitimate one. The king likes pretty women and, well, he met my mother among the handmaids of his wife. So, that's how I got here. I guess I was happy during my childhood in Rhyme. But soon the king sent me to live with one of his husk girls. 
The man was tough and violent. He insisted on teaching me how to handle the spear, sword, and shield. He didn't let me drink mead or frequent the company of girls. Can you believe someone would inflict such hardships? Now I serve in the guard of the King Horik. I am not particularly happy since I am in the shadow of hardened men who won the job by their efforts. While I was granted my position only by the virtue of being a bastard son to the king, my relationship with the King Horik is delicate. Taking you with me could cause me problems. Well, perhaps I could offer you work. Can you fight? I was trained by Thorgur. Look at me. Well, because unlike many who, who are with you, I am a warrior. I could beat anyone here with a spear or sword. I am worth perhaps five men of yours. I can also be a great drinker, and I have been praised many times as a scald. I need no more information, Eagle. Just do not give me problems. Good. Give me a few moments to prepare, and I'll be ready to move. Cool. Grabe. That's where I was born 20 years ago. Son of a king. And yet slave, but the best skull in all Denmark. Don't have time to chat right now. Alright, so we're going to go try and find Snake in the Eye. It's a lumber camp. You arrive at a lumber camp. The sound of axes, saws fill the air, and a few free men were enter. I've never been to a lumber camp in this game, so I'm just gonna see what's up. Look at them, they're having a little party right there, singing songs. Got their woman working on their woods. No one in charge here? Huh. Maybe that person standing over there? Hi, ah, this is a work camp. I like to work here. Such nice trees, but they burn easily. I could ensure you that they don't for a small fee. I want to buy some timber. Of course, I have plenty of timber available. Very well, I would like to buy some. I don't know what I really need it for. I think maybe to upgrade my camp, actually. But, uh, so that's cool. That is Siegfried. Solvig, hail handsome. I have been watching you a while. This girl's hot, bro. Look at her. Her curvy white hair. Who are you, and why are you watching me? Calm down, handsome. It is wiser to be grateful. But allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sylvig Olafdatter. I'm not just any woman. I am a Skaldmor. By your face, I see you do not know what I am talking about. Well, I must admit that there are not many like me, and here even less than in my own land, Norvega. So, you can understand, Skarkmo is a virgin who takes the way of weapons. Also, poetry, since poetry and war come from the same impulse. The main thing is that I have followed and studied you the past few days. I will join you now. You have a great future ahead of if my intuition serves me well. And I want to share your luck. Um... Thanks, I think I owe you my life. She smiles. They were but fools. They had been following you for days and have had a hundred better opportunities. However, any chosen time would have been a failure because I was ready to rescue you. Aw, how sweet. Why, of course, plenty of luck to go around. Oh, luck can't be valued too much. This is a harsh, harsh world. The timid die young, handsome, and the bold quickly follow. But I am Skarmo. I fight like a Valkyrie. And sing as Baldur sang. Before that cunning Loki, 
finished him off mid stanza. The Yaros of Novraga and Denmark would pay a fortune and their left thumb for me to join them, but the one I choose is you, handsome. Very well, you are hired, but stop calling me handsome. Good, give me a few moments to prepare, and I'll be ready to move. <laughs> that was so neat. Nice! Army's growing! Skachrachba. Yo, getting some more people going. Yeah, see you good. Do I know you? I am Assassin Parks. I am Yao Sigurd Ragnarsson, vassal of the Kingdom of Denmark, Lord of Skyfrabai and Rai by the North. I know your name. They say you are a most valiant warrior. I can only hope that your honor and mercy matches your valor. Sigurd, it is time to talk. I can cause you a lot of damage if you do not listen to me. I would like to know more about you. There is something I wish which I would like to discuss with you in private. Huh. Okay. Bitch. He looks carefully at you for a few seconds, watching you with an eye surrounded by a serpent. I see I was hoping to avoid this, but I am tired. Your mere presence offends my sight. Of course, I know your name, Assassin Parks. Yao Hurruf Haraldson sent me news about you. The man who would kill King Horik Hemmingsen and help us take Fries. I was happy to hear this, but then I got more news from Yao Hurruf Haraldson yesterday. Assassin Parks is a traitor, said the messenger. Be careful, he wants Sven Bulnik and comes to talk to you. He has destroyed our plans in threes, protected Dasinga, and killed your Vikings. When you see him, kill him. You are perhaps too bold to come here. My issues are not with you. I just want to find Sven Bulnik and my mother. How stupid can you be? Sven Bulnik is not just any man, but my favorite. The man who stands in the prow of my own personal ship. You and I have nothing to talk about. Get out now, while my obligation to hear you in a peaceful weighs down my sword. You don't trust me, I understand, but it is very important for me to see my mother. Sven Bulnik attacked the ship on which I was traveling and kidnapped my mother. He had mistaken the person because of an object she was carrying. Your mother is the woman touched by the gods. Yes, Sen brought her to me. As I had asked, she was carrying an object, a letter from overseas, that had to be intercepted. I talked to her, yes. She spoke about a man called Bolo, who had given her the letter on the ship called the Wodenrick. Do you recognize that name? Yes, he was also traveling in the Wodenrick. No, I do not. Who is he? Should I? Lying. Why do you lie? You say that you traveled on the same boat with your mother. And she says she met Bolo on the same boat. That man Bolo is very important to me. But Sven made the mistake of leaving him in his hideout. Now Bolo is gone because someone rescued him. I suspect I know who this someone is. Bolo is so important that I would gladly trade him for Sven Bulnik and your mother. Who still lives. Only because Sven has taken a liking to her. You tell me where Sven Bulnik and my mother are, and Bolo is yours. I do not know where Bolo is. I am too old to swallow your lies. Bolo means too much to me. And I know where he is. What I do not know is if you have hidden him among your people or elsewhere. So here is the deal. He looks at you. His eyes, his hard features, and even the wrinkles on his face communicate extreme seriousness. There is a farm near Skythra, belonging to a man that is loyal to me. Go there, and Sven Bulnik and your mother will meet you there. If Bodo is there, my man, my men will exchange Sven Bulnik 
and your mother for him. If Bodo is not there, your mother will die before your eyes, and I will send Sven away to a place where you will never find him. I will go to that farm near Skyfra. Farewell. Well, I think we have nothing to talk about. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> that's getting interesting. Got to turn over my homie with my wife. My mom will probably die anyways. Let's do this trade, bro. It's late at night. Your man needs some rest. Oh, God. So annoying. Having too many men in your party will cause people to fear that the plan is to attack. You may wish to put some men in camp quarters for now. Oh, gosh. Okay, so I got to go all the way back. I will uh, be back here in a second with less men. Okay, so now I have less men. The dirt road leads to the large fence beyond which several houses have been built. It seems like a prosperous place. Home to rich men. From where you are, you can see some men moving around. Everything seems quiet. Here, welcome. My name is Thora Hufkosan. I am the only daughter of Ulf. You should talk to him. Thora, nice to meet you. I will go and talk to your father. Farewell. Thora, your name is pretty as you are. I am Ego Horrocks, and my weapons are my sword and spear, but I yield to your beauty. Hail, my name is Ulf Thoranson. My Jarl Sigurd Ragnarsson notifies me that you, are wel you were coming. Welcome to my farm. You and your men can eat and sleep here until Sigurd's people arrive. The only thing I ask is that none of them comes close to my daughter, Thora. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Olaf. I promise that no one will touch your daughter, and I appreciate your hospitality. Olf gives some orders, and two servants steps out of the main house with the vineyards and drink. They give skier, sour milk, and buttered bread to your man. Thanks for your sharing your drink and food with us, Ulf. It is all that I have. I offered it with goodwill. He's lying. I've seen the barrels of beer, venison, in a nearby warehouse. We are eating and drinking this shit while he's keeping the best for himself. He spits out what he was eating and throws away the skier on. He is laughing at us. He's a rich man yet gives us the worst dining. He has neglected the laws of hospitality. He dies now. Nobody laughs at Egan. And he will serve an example to others to respect us. She her hands calling for calm. If you kill this man, you'll have to pay high compensation to his family. Or perhaps they decide to seek revenge on yours. Is that what you want? Do not kill him then, but let's cut his sword hand. He does not deserve Wahala. Good food and drink has been offered. This is the home of Ulf. We'll follow his ways. Nobody is going to die here. Eat and drink what our host offered you. And be happy with it. Bullshit. I will not drink their piss and eat their garbage. I do not care if an ego kills him or not. I will directly to Ulf's warehouse and take what I want. He applauds. Yes, good idea, Ragnar. I'll do the same. Assassin Parks may stay with him and drink sour milk if he wants. But that is my food and my drink. You are a thief and a robber. It's not yours. This farm belongs to my men, while we await the arrival of Sven Bulnek.
Your pardon, Assassin Parks, but I cannot keep my tongue still any longer. That harlot Salig, every time she sees me, she points the five fingers of her hand at me, a peasant's sign to ward off evil. I know I am not the best of men, but I am seeking re repentance, and I deserve it better than to be object to a witch's superstition. I think she has some devil's blood in her possession. I just thought you should know. Weekly budget. You discovered that the farm is a good place to spend a day away from the dangers and difficult decisions of the road. For a moment you dream that the farm is yours. You cultivate the field, direct the slaves, and have each day bettered by the following. You think of Thora, who visits Eagle every night. She is a beautiful woman, protected by her father. She does not have to worry about anything other than being happy. You see yourself sitting on a bench at the door watching the sunset or the dawn. Is this what you want? Or would it be too much of the same for you? No matter, you still have some things to do before, do before thinking of a quiet life. On the second day, one of your lookouts alerts you about the armed men approaching. They are numerous and carry the banner of Sigurd's snake in the eye. Without having give orders, your men pick up their weapons, put on their armor, and they run to the farm entrance to form their shield wall. Hail, men in farm. We have a prisoner for you. You look at the men who came. They are many, maybe more than sixty, and they are well armed. A prisoner pushed ahead with his head covered with the sack. Enter. The stranger shouts, Hail, my name is Ulver, known as White Hair. So you're the one seeking my brother. Eagle yells, Hail, Ulver, White Hair. I have heard of you. What are your agreements with Loki? Ugo, King Bastard, I have heard of you too, and I see that you have become Mouth of Assassin Parks. Speak to your mother. God, that is so... That goes so fast. What's up, Mama? Prisoner, Mother, are you fine? Carefully, you take the sack off her head, your mother. Prisoner, the ugly face of a smiling man appears before you. Perhaps you thought you were just going to give you your mother? <laughs> After that you done destroying our plans and dosing it? Insulting my Yarrow at his own home? Sigurd, Ragnarsson wants you dead. Now you die. Suddenly Oliver shouts, man, shield wall! Now by Ragnar, by Sia! By Odin! Oh, that fool got it! Oh, that was insane! Swinging like a mad man. Got your back, homie. That's how we do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After a brutal combat, Ulf's farm is covered with the corpses. Your men roam between the bodies, finishing off the wounded and taking everything that is of value. You look at Eagle, who's cutting off the finger of the dying warrior to take a golden ring. Then at the Brunhild, who's watching with horror all the carnage. Then at the Ringard, who's laughing, sitting on a corpse. You yourself do not know how you feel. Somebody said once that war changes people. That it is a ferocious demon that devours your soul. How you changed. Are you different? 
Your thoughts are broken. When two of your soldiers bring before you Oliver, he's still alive, but not for long. The blood gushes from his side, unstoppable. Talk to Oliver. Eagle stops saluting when Oliver is carried to you. He approaches. Damn, Oliver, white hair, perhaps? You thought you could beat us? <laughs> I had heard that you are a smart man. Oliver coughs up blood, puts his hand on his side. He looks tired, very tired. That, still proud, but still proud. He stands up straight. My life and my death serve the purpose of my lord. My victory would have been over and enemy that he hates. My death will make you banned before the assembly assassin parks. What does he mean about the assembly eagle? He spits to one side with apathy before speaking. You'll be accused of having killed Ulver before the assembly, the assembly of free men, and they will demand payment or revenge. As Sigurd already wants you dead, it is clear that they want they will kill you. His face is pale. He has a moment of life left. You fool. I will laugh at you when Sigurd Ragnarsson kills you. As I enjoy feasts at Wahala, you have no idea who Sigurd Snake in the Eye is. And he is capable of. Everyone fears him, even his own brothers. Well, maybe not Ivar the Boneless. Ivar is the most ruthless of the sons of Ragnar. He has a cough that makes him stoop. He sees blood flowing from his side in less quantity, and his eyes begin to fade. I am dying. Give me my sword, so that Valkyries will see that I am a warrior, and take me to the halls of Odin. Assassin Parks, this man has insulted and threatened you, and tried to kill us. He is not deserving of a compensation. Also, of compassion. Also, giving the sword is a pagan custom. Let him die and go to hell. Ego, give him his sword. It allows him to travel to Wahala. Ego carefully puts the sword in the hand of Ulver, who looks at you gratefully. Banquets, women, and endless battles awaits you in the halls of the gods, Ulver. You've been good warrior. Although we have been enemies, I will see you someday, and maybe we can fight alongside each other at Ragnarok. Sir, it is time to hit the road. We should go talk to my father, King Horik. Being charged with murder before the assembly is a very serious thing, and Sigird will seek to exploit the advantage of two its fullest. Let us not waste more time, but go. Okay, this will conclude uh, this tutorial, uh, not tutorial, but this part of the story mode, and I will uh, come back for uh, part 7.